This is the application of formulas in geometry tutorial. The first formula I'd like to discuss with you is the formula for perimeter. Now, perimeter is just the distance around an object. So you can take the perimeter of any object, the perimeter of a rectangle, a square, a circle, a diamond, anything you want. For this example, we're going to use rectangles and squares. To calculate the perimeter of a rectangle, you want to add up all the sides. The long sides of this rectangle we'll call the length, and I'll abbreviate that with L. And the short sides of the rectangle we'll call the width, and I'll abbreviate that with W. So, in order to get the perimeter of this rectangle, what you want to do is add up those four sides. So, we have length, but we have it twice here on top and bottom, so that's two times the length, and we have the width, which is on the left and right. So, we can add two times the width, because there's two widths, the left width and the right width. When you add those together, that would be the perimeter of that figure, the rectangle. Now, the second important formula that I want to talk to you about is area. If you wanted to calculate the area of a rectangle, you would just multiply the length times the width. So, for example, if the length of this rectangle were 10 and the width of the rectangle were 5, then the perimeter of that rectangle would be 2 times the length, 10, plus 2 times the width, 5. So, 2 times 10, plus 2 times 5. Two times 10 is 20, and 2 times 5 is 10. So the perimeter of that figure would be 30. And the area would just be the length times the width. The length, which is 10, times the width of 5. So that figure would have an area of 50 units squared. I'm going to write u for units. It's important to note that because area takes into account two di dimensions, it's going to have a squared unit at the end, whereas perimeter is only one direction one dimension, the dimension in the plane of the figure that you're working with. So let's take a look at the formulas perimeter and area for a square. To calculate the perimeter of a square, you just take the length of one of the sides and multiply it by 4, because you know that a square has four congruent sides. They all have a length, in this case, of s. And if you wanted to calculate the area of a square, that would just be the length of one of those sides times the length of the other. And since all the sides are congruent, it's really just side squared, side times side. So let's do a practice problem to calculate the area of this square. What if I told you that the square had a side length of x? Well, to calculate the area, you would just take that side length and multiply it by itself. And what you'd get is x squared, the side length squared. Now, if you were asked to calculate the perimeter of that square, you know you would just have 4 times the length of one of the sides which is x, since all the sides of a square are congruent. So that's how you calculate perimeter and area of rectangles and squares. Let's go on and take a look at triangles. Triangles have their own special formula for area. To calculate the area of a triangle, you multiply one-half times the base of the triangle times the height of the triangle. And we'll discuss base and height in a moment. And to calculate the perimeter of a triangle, 
it's just the same as it was for a rectangle or a square. It's just the distance around all the sides. So let's take a look with this triangle. The base of this triangle is essentially any one of the sides of the triangle. That could be a base, that could be a base, and this side could be a base. And the height of the triangle can be calculated by extending a line from one vertex of the triangle to the opposite side of that vertex so that you hit that opposite side at a 90 degree angle. Anytime you do that from any vertex of the triangle, you're going to get the height of that triangle. So that right there is the height of this triangle. Now, what if I told you that this triangle had a height of 5 inches and a base of 4 inches. Could you calculate the area? Well definitely. You know that area is just equal to 1 half the base of that triangle, which in this case is 4 inches, times the height of the triangle, which in this case is 5 inches. So area is equal to 1 half 4 times 5, which is 20. And half of 20 is 10. So the area of this triangle is 10 inches squared. Remember, when we're calculating area, we're calculating two dimensions, in this case up and down, and left and right. So our unit is going to be squared. Now, what about on the triangle on the right? What if on the triangle on the right, I told you that it had a height of 3 feet and a base of 11 feet. Well, what would be the height and what would be the base? I'm going to say that the base for this triangle that I'm referring to is right here. And that would be 11 feet. Now the height that I'm referring to has to be extending from that base to the opposite vertex. So this base is along the bottom and the opposite vertex is right here on top. So the height would just be a line that would come straight from that vertex down to the base and intersect that base at a 90 degree angle. So this must be the height that I'm referring to in this triangle and that height we've been told is 3 feet. So if we wanted to calculate the area of this triangle, we would use the formula area is equal to 1 half the base, which is 11 feet, times the height, which is 3 feet. So we'll simplify that. Area is equal to 1 half 11 times 3, which is 33. And half of 33 is 16.5. So this triangle will have an area of 16.5 square feet. Now the last types of figures I'd like to tell you about are circles. There are a couple important things that you should know about when working with circles. The first thing I've indicated here in red the distance from the center of any circle and the distance or the center of this circle is the black dot there in the middle. The distance from that center to any side of the circle, so this red line right here would constitute what I'm referring to, this distance is called the radius of a circle. So the radius is just the distance from the center of the circle to the edge of the circle. Now the blue line, the dashed blue line that I've drawn through here, you'll notice passes directly through the center of the circle. And any line that extends from one side of the circle 
through the center of the circle to the other side of the circle is known as a diameter. So a diameter is the distance across the circle, only passing through the center. And a radius is the distance from the center to the edge of the circle. So a radius must equal half the length of, di of the diameter. So one half the length of the diameter, d. When calculating the area of a circle, there's a special formula for that. The area is equal to pi times the radius squared. Now if you remember, pi is a constant and it has a rough value of 3.14. Now pi is an interesting number. It's irrational. It actually goes on forever. If you're interested, you can look online to see where scientists have calculated the furthest decimal point that they can understand with pi, and it's something like thousands of zeros deep. They use supercomputers to try to calculate that out to get the most exact value of pi. But as far as anyone knows, it's never going to end how many decimals will extend from pi. A nice approximation of pi, however, that you can use sometimes is 22 over 7. 22 over 7 is roughly 3.14. It goes on, it's 3.142857, etc. It goes on for a long time in decimals. Now, the reason I say that you could use 22 over 7 is in some cases, you'll want to use a fraction as opposed to a decimal to get your answer, such as maybe on the SAT or the ACT. It can go faster in doing problems with a fraction like that than with a decimal like 3.14. And later on, depending on where you go to college and later on in your high school, some of your teachers may allow you to leave your answer in pi. So not even put a number in there, just leave it as pi units, which we'll be doing in some of our work. It's a nice convenient way to leave a clean answer. So that's how you calculate the area of a circle. It's equal to pi times the radius squared. Another nice thing about circles that you should know about is the circumference of a circle. Now the circumference of a circle is the distance around the circle and that's equal to 2 pi r. You can also use the formula pi times d, d being the diameter, because the diameter is just 2 times the radius, the 2 r from the previous formula. So don't confuse those two formulas, pi r squared and 2 pi r. They're very similar, but it's a huge distinction between them. So let's do some practice problems using circumference and area. Here's our practice circle. And what if I told you that our practice circle had a radius of five inches? And I asked you for the circumference and the area of that circle. Well, circumference, you know, is equal to 2 pi r. So, in this case, we multiply 2 by pi, which is a constant, by our radius, 5. Well, 2 times 5 is 10, so the circumference of this circle is 10 pi. Now, your teacher may ask you to turn pi back into a decimal, and if you were asked that, pi is roughly 3.14, so 10 times 3.14 is 31.4. Now, to calculate the area of this circle, we know that area is equal to pi times r squared. So, we have pi times our radius, which is 5, squared. Well, 5 squared is 25, and 25 times pi is 25 pi. So that would be the area of this circle. 
Now, what if I gave you a problem with the diameter of a circle? So let's imagine this green line here is the diameter of this circle, and it has a value of 4 meters. Could you calculate the circumference and area for me? Well, let's start with the circumference formula. It's either 2 pi r or pi d, whichever you prefer. So in this case, since we know that d is equal to 4 meters, I'm just going to use the bottom formula, pi d. So the circumference is equal to d, which is 4, times pi. So circumference is 4 pi for this circle. Now the area we know is pi times the radius squared. Well, they gave us our diameter, and you also know that diameter is 2 times your radius. So if our diameter is 4, that's equal to 2 times our radius. To solve for our radius, we can just divide by 2, and we have a radius in this case of 2 meters. So we can plug that back into our area formula. Area is equal to pi times our radius squared. So area is equal to 2 squared, which is 4, times pi. Now, don't be confused here by this example that our area and our circumference happen to be the same thing. The only time that will ever work is when your diameter is 4 or your radius is 2, since that's the same thing. If, for example, our diameter happened to be 6, that would make our radius 3. And if you were to plug that in, so I'll just do that as an example so that you can see that your area would be different than your circumference. If 3 happened to be our radius, we'd have pi times 3 squared. And 3 squared is 9. So area is equal to 9 pi. Whereas with our circumference, that's equal to 2 times the radius times pi. And if our radius were 3, circumference would be 2 times 3, which is 6 pi. So remember, the only time your area and your circumference are going to be equal to each other is when your diameter is 4 or your radius is 2. Just stick with these formulas and you'll be all good.